I don't know if Ty Smith is making this roster. I don't know if Ty Smith can make this roster, meaning logistically in the salary cap. But man, if he does, he'll be the story of camp. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Penguins. Comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Pirates that I hope you'll check out. Penguins 3, Red Wings 2 last night in preseason action in Detroit. Casey DeSmith played well. Brian Rust, Josh Archibald, and Jason Zucker with the goals. All Smith contributed to the cause was what would have been a third assist on that last goal. It was on the power play. Uh, He passed it across, and Jeff Petrie slid it down to Danton Heinen. Heinen took the shot. Zucker tipped it home. That's not why I'm bringing him up. Smith has been probably the most significant and pleasant surprise of the camp in that, as we've been discussing now for months, the Penguins have a zillion defensemen under NHL contract. They entered this camp with nine of them. They're trying again to move P.O. Joseph. They might have to try and move somebody else to accommodate Smith, who's a left shot, and heaven knows there's enough of those on the roster. But setting aside the business matters, which Mike Sullivan did say yesterday morning is not going to be a consideration with any remaining roster moves, he's been a player. He's been a find. And I mean that in the scouting sense. Not that Smith hasn't been on hockey radars. He was the first overall pick in the 2015 WHL draft uh, as a junior. So everyone was in on him at the time. He was a first-round pick of the Devils in 2018, 17th overall. And then once he made it to Newark, he was a member of the NHL's all-rookie team a couple years ago, was a really, really good player as a rookie. Then things went south, and then New Jersey's management had a hiccup that a lot of management teams do whenever young defensemen struggle meaning their inclination is to just bench them or punish them or listen to me, kid. I'll tell you that you can do all this fancy skating that you want, but if you don't take care of your own end, you're not going to play at this level. When in fact, what you actually want in the modern version of this beautiful game, the world's fastest game, is to let your defensemen, plural, fly. Let them move all about the rink because everywhere that they've got the puck is somewhere that your opponent doesn't have it. And that's what makes Smith exciting. This portion of Daily Shot of Penguins is brought to you by the good people at the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, where they're committed to providing food for all of our neighbors in need across western Pennsylvania. They, in turn, need your help. Find out how one dollar can be turned into five full meals. For those in need, visit pittsburghfoodbank.org. I'm not going to overstate this. Smith is 22, so he's got a lot to learn. He's 5'11", so he's not going to be shoving anybody around, and he's certainly not going to be part of the solution toward clearing the front of the net, which has been a big priority this offseason as well. What's more, he's not about to win some kind of Norris trophy, whether it's for his offense or his defense, especially not his defense, because he hasn't shown the awareness yet. Certainly not close to what he shows at the other end. So again, I'm not going to build this up excessively, but this team and this blue line needed more mobility, especially after Mike Matheson was sent out in the Jeff Petrie trade. It's not an excessively slow group, but neither is it an excessively fast group. And you need that. When you look around at the contenders in the NHL, one of the more common denominators is a mobile defensive group. 
That's something that Jim Rutherford told me the year before he left. He pointed out to me, this was in the pandemic year. Look at all these teams that are in the playoffs right now. Look at all these teams that have advanced. Look at Dallas. Look at Carolina. Look at what they have in common. It's that. It's that their defensemen could really, really skate. That makes it hard to forecheck them. doesn't matter how small they are. That makes it hard to prevent both zone exits and zone entries. Smith happens to be among the analytical leaders in zone entries among defensemen in the entire league in the time that New Jersey allowed him to play. Problem with the Devils, in addition to the fact that they're the Devils and haven't really gotten it together for quite a long time now, is that they didn't have the offensive depth, to say the least, for that skill to matter. He would gain the zone and he'd look around and he'd see a whole bunch of nobodies and Jack Hughes and go, what am I doing here? You know, the other factor that really works in the Penguins' favor here is that he'll be coached by Todd Reardon. He will have specialty treatment from Reardon, the way Matheson got, the way Latang got. Reardon's an ace at one very, very specific thing, and that's taking players who are offensive defensemen and teaching them that when they're in their own end, They don't need to be crazy fancy. They need to put themselves into a position, a stable position, allow the puck to come to them, and then go. That's what you saw from Matheson in particular last season. Matheson didn't become superior defensively. He was just asked to do less defensively. Here, Mike, see this right here? See this little line? See this area? You stay here. When the puck comes to you, you get it and go do those those things that you did that one game to the Islanders all night long. You know what I'm talking about. That's what they want to see from Smith as well. That's not going to be easy. It's not going to be quick. And there's going to be times, I can promise you, if and when Smith does get into this lineup, and he will, that you're going to go, oh, this, can you not... Just not him, not now. Save it for some other year. But you did that with Matheson, too. Matheson became a pretty good player. Not a very good one, as we saw with all those pucks going in off of his feet in the playoff round, because he, again, just not that great in his own zone. But you need, need, need what Smith can bring. And, oh, by the way, he's really young. Also doesn't hurt. This roster of all rosters. When we come back, J1Q. Today's J1Q comes from Ryan, who asks, DK, am I overreacting to the Penguins losing Radim Zahorno on waivers? He had a 750K cap hit, showed he could skate, had some obvious offensive upside. Another team clearly thought he had value. Sure, he was only a fourth liner, but why? Ryan, if he was put on waivers, if anybody gets put on waivers, the management in that equation has made up their mind that they're okay with losing him. They might rather not lose him because then he could stay in the minors and remain in their system and maybe make the Wilkes-Barre team better. But it's a conscious decision that's made. Look at the roster that was put on the ice last night in Detroit. Every single player out there, even the Josh Archibalds and so forth, were deemed to be more valuable by Ron Hextall, Brian Burke, Mike Sullivan, and everybody else, than Zahorna. I can't stress this part enough. Even though I've been mentioning it all summer on this show as it relates to Zahorna, he needed to win a job, not be bequeathed a job. Drew O'Connor needed to win a job, 
not just have it made available to him because he's younger and you want to see the roster get younger. When I would say things like that, I know that it wasn't something that was matching the popular sentiment when it comes to this team. Almost reflexively, everyone says, oh, Mike Sullivan will never use anybody who's young. But Zahorna was put into situations where he could have won himself a job. He could have done that by outperforming what he did in Wilkesbury. Never mind the occasions in which he was in the NHL. And he'd flash it. You'd see something. You'd see, obviously, the size. You would see the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? The, the, the elegance with which he could skate for a bigger man. That's not common to see somebody who's 6'7 moving the way he does and to be filled out physically the way he was as opposed to being lanky, which most 6'7 humans are. That was all good stuff. Didn't really amount to anything. So what does that tell you? Well, Zahorna talked a lot, including during this camp, about having been ill last year early on and how it affected his conditioning. Sullivan praised his conditioning going into this camp. It didn't amount to anything. It didn't amount to anything. Look at the players who are still around, or at least who lasted this long, even if they don't make it through to the season opener, like Sam Poulin, and ask yourself, what'd they do to earn this? Is it just because Sam was a first-round pick? I don't know. I seriously doubt that. Or Ty Smith, who I just spoke about in the opening segment. No one, no one, no one had Smith making the Penguins' defensive core on their bingo card. He still might not, but he's still here. Why? He did enough to impress people. Zahorn has had two years to do that in the Pittsburgh system and in Pittsburgh and didn't. So when you lose a guy like that on waivers... I, nobody's comfortable with it. Certainly not the fans, because it's not even a trade. But I can tell you this, too. If you're on waivers, they would much rather have traded you and undoubtedly tried and didn't pull it off. And remember, there are 31 other GMs watching your team and your system as well. None of them, including the Calgary Flames, thought he was worth that. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. We'll do another one tomorrow.